this is a pre-intro because after editing this video I realized it's really really long so I'm going to give you some shortcuts if you are interested in the lookups then keep watching because that's the first topic if you are interested in conditional formatting then fast forward to around three minutes 25 seconds give or take this little intro um, if you're interested in macros fast forward to about five minutes um, advanced formulas uh, fast forward to 6 minutes, 3 seconds, pivot table 7 minutes, 27 seconds, um, advanced formatting, fast forward to 9 minutes, 3 seconds, yes, it's getting long. If you're interested in charts, fast forward to 12 minutes, 4 seconds, and split sheets, fast forward to 13 minutes, 2 seconds, and last but definitely not least, if you are interested in VB, then fast forward to 13 minutes, 50 seconds. Thanks. We are going to have a knowledge exchange about advanced Excel. I see that there's a need for people to just know like, well, the title of this is going to be the top 10 commonly asked questions, advanced questions about Excel. So. If you are going on a job interview and you the requirements call for Excel and you're like, oh, well, I thought I knew Excel. What are all these other questions they're asking? So me? just making two columns sum up. Yeah, that's cool. But there's so much more that you can do with Excel. It's a plethora of opportunities. So let's get started with the first one. I have a list here. And um, I'm actually just going to talk about them right now, just like coffee table talk. Um, but if you want examples, if you want more examples, like sh me showing you the Excel, then I'll do that in a supplemental video. All right, so number one, VLOOKUPs. <clears throat> if someone says, well, have you ever used a VLOOKUP? There's actually a VLOOKUP and a HLOOKUP. VLOOKUP is for vertical lookup and H lookup is for horizontal lookup but V lookup is the most commonly used uh, lookup formula. So what it does is pulls info from other columns into a column of your choice. So for example say you have two tabs in your worksheet and the first tab has a thousand names and the birth date of those names ne right next to it. In your second tab, you only have 10 names, and you want the birthday of those 10 people next to their names. Now, you could go on the first tab and add a filter and check for those 10 names, or or let's say 100 names, because 100, 100 names is a little bit more uh, time-consuming. So you could do a filter and check for the ver birthday of those 100 names, but that would really be time-consuming. So the better option is to do a VLOOKUP. So in your second tab, next to the 100 names, you do the formula. Um, and you do the formula for VLOOKUP. And what you just choose is the, you want to find the name Nina. You want to find Nina's name in the first tab. And if you find it, put in the birthday. Then all you have to do is just drag the formula down to the rest of the 100 rows and you have the birthday for all of the 100 names in your second tab without even bothering to search for those names in the first tab. So that's VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP is, you know, instead of a vertical it would be horizontal and it's really easy but it's not that common. I think a lot of people use VLOOKUPs. See? Not bad, right? And the point of all these things are to just make Excel quicker and faster to use. It's not as manual. And um, that's sort of the point of all these formulas and things like that, just to make things faster and get the job done. Yeah. All right, number two, conditional formatting. Okay, so um, if someone, if they say, have you ever done conditional formatting? Conditional formatting is, for example, when you want, say, you're doing um, formulas about money. So you can add a conditional format to the column that has money or the dollar amount. And if the dollar amount, say, if the dollar amount is negative, then you can 
uh, formatted that cell to show a bright red font or a bold font or you can make the entire cell red or highlight it. Um, the point is to draw your attention to that cell. Now if the dollar amount is um, over the balance or over the profit limit or the profit amount or something like that, then you can make it green. And you don't have to do that for each and every cell. You can just do a conditional format on the entire column and uh, set the formatting conditions. If it's less than this, do bright red or bold or highlight yellow, yellow, whatever you like. Whatever format you choose, the conditional formatting is a good way to add color coding and highlights to a field automatically. And you don't have to say, oh, that that value is negative. I need to highlight that one red. With conditional formatting, it's done for you. All right. Number three, macros. Macros are fun because, um, like I said, it's a way to automatically do things for you. Um, with the macro, Excel lets you record things that you do often. So say you have this uh, spreadsheet and you always copy one column into another column. If you uh, create a macro, macro will let you record yourself copying that first column into that second column. Once you have that macro recorded, you just press play and it'll copy that column into the second column for you just like that you don't have to do anything and it can be for many 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 tabs it can open up other spreadsheets it can open up other documents import a document import a text file into your spreadsheet a macro just will record things that you do and then do it for you automatically when you want it done again it's very handy so next advanced formulas for example nested if conditions okay so a nested if condition is just one example of an advanced formula. You know how you, you know, you know what a formula is just like equals uh, the sum of two columns. So an advanced nested if formula or nested if condition means that um, you have more than one formula being used at the same time. So for example, our VLOOKUP example, you have your VLOOKUP uh, looking up birthdays. Say you want to add another formula on top of that VLOOKUP, you could say um, if the birthday is found and it's greater than yesterday, then do this or do that. Uh, so that's what a nested if condition is. It's really just um, an if condition on top of another formula. It could be another if formula, it could be any formula. And uh, uh, you can use nested formulas on top of other formulas too. They don't have to be if uh, conditions or formulas. You could have nested VLOOKUPs. Just nested means um, one on top of the other or more than multiple formulas. All right. So the next one, pivot tables. Yay! Pivot tables are fun because say you have a spreadsheet that has 30 columns. Ooh. <laughs> I won't do that again. <laughs> 30. <laughs> 30 columns. Um, and you want to see data, or you want to see data from the first column, the 15th column, and the 22nd column. So you, you could go through the spreadsheet and hide the columns you don't want to see, or you could just make a pivot table. And the pivot table will let you drag in the columns that you want to see, the information that you want to see. So in the names, birthday example, you can, if you had a bunch of other data, say in one tab you had the, the birthday, the name, the address, the phone number, just a bunch of information about people. You can create a pivot table um, and drag in the name, the birthday, and the state only. 
Um, and then you can filter on that state state. So you can filter on select columns without having to view all of the data, all of the columns in your original spreadsheet or your original tab. So that's a pivot table. The next one, advanced formatting. Uh, for example, the R1C1 formulas. Okay, so R1C1, that is, have you ever opened up a spreadsheet and at the top, the, the column headers say 1, 2, 3, 4 instead of A, B, C, D, and then the uh, rows say 1, 2, 3, 4 as well. So to get rid of that, you just need to go to the Home button and then click on Remove R1C1. Uh, formulas and that will get you back to the ABCD. Some people prefer to see the one, two, three, four going across and the one, two, three, four going down. I personally personally don't. Um, I like to see the ABCD is just what I'm used to. So if the problem is when you open up a spreadsheet from someone that has it that way, um, once you open up another spreadsheet, it will automatically default to the R1C1. Values so the one, two, three, four instead of A, B, C, D. Okay, let's see. Oh, how to hide grid lines. I don't know if that's advanced, but um, if you don't want to see the grid lines in your spreadsheet and the formatting column, you can just uncheck grid lines and you don't have to have the vertical and the horizontal grid lines um, showing. You can choose one or the other, and it's just for formatting. Just for appearance, if, if you like that better or if the person you're making it for likes it better, up to you. All right. Oh, sharing. So this is all part of advanced formatting. So if you want to make a, uh, a workbook or a spreadsheet, if you want to make one that um, other people can manipulate at the same time, there's a sharing option and when you share it, you have to make sure that you check the box that says allow editing, I think it says allow multiple editing at the same time or allow changes to be saved at the same time. Otherwise, if uh, more than one people, more than one person has the uh, workbook open, um, once they try to save whatever changes they make, it'll give them an error that says so-and-so has this workbook open. You, They have to close it before you can save it or something like that. Or you're not allowed to save it because it's being edited right now. Save it as something else and then, um, then you'll have a different spreadsheet and that's just a mess. So... <laughs> so um, the way to let multiple people work on a spreadsheet at the same time is to use the sharing option and uh, make sure to check to allow edits or allow saves, um, multiple saves at the same time. The next one is charts, making charts. So charts are different.